Welcome to At Issue. My name is H. Wayne Wilson. We're glad that you're with us for the next half hour to hear about gambling in Illinois. It has been growing and growing and growing. Where is the end? Who benefits and who is being hurt by the expansion of gambling in the state of Illinois? And to have that conversation, I welcome to the table, as I have many times before, Dave Leach. Dave is the state representative from Peoria. He is a Republican in his last term after how many years? 28. 28 years. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. And Tom Schweik is here. Tom is the executive director of the Illinois Casino Gaming Association. Thank you for joining us. Yes, sir. And we probably should point out that prior to your stint with the Casino Gaming Association, you were actually on the regulatory body. Yes, I was a uh, member of staff with the Illinois Gaming Board. So he comes with two different perspectives for us, which we appreciate. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Uh, so before we get into where we are with gaming right now, maybe a little bit of history, Tom, would be appropriate. Okay. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not sure exactly when racing began in Illinois, but I, I believe it's been over 100 years that, that people have been allowed in the state to be, bet on racing. Uh, and, and then in 1974, and I believe July of 1974, the lottery bill passed and, and we started a, a state lottery. Uh, in 1990, the Riverboat Gambling Act passed, and uh, the first casino opened in September of 1991. Uh, since then, there hasn't been a whole lot of growth. There, there have been some things with charitable games and bingo and pull tabs and those kind of things. There have been some attempts at internet gaming that, that so far have been unsuccessful. And then in, uh, I believe, 2010, the, the 2009 or 10, the Video Gaming Act was passed and the first video machines be became operational in, in 2011 and into 2012. And he mentioned the internet. What about this online gambling that Illinois, it was an experimental three year limit or something of that nature that uh, expires at the end of this month. Are there, is there anything that might save it from hitting sunset? I'm not familiar with that bill, frankly, so because there might not be a bill that I know of. I, I, I don't, it's, I'm not. It terminates May It's not on my radar screen. Yeah, it terminates Sorry. March 25th, so it may oh, just. Oh, okay. Yeah, and you're not back in session before then. <laughs> well, a, we're back in session in, uh, next month. Yeah. April. So, so March 25th is upon us. Um, let's, let's talk a little bit about um, video gaming because that's the most recent one. Why was it that after years and years of discussion about whether there should be video gaming, why do you think it passed? That? And it took a while for it to be implemented, but what, what was the change? Well, I think it wound up as a funding source in the capital bill, uh, capital projects bill. I mean, I was stunned when it showed up in there because for years, uh, video gambling had not been considered a, an appropriate uh, state revenue source because of concerns about the mob in Chicago running it. So all of a sudden <laughs> it showed up in the Capitol bill and it's just skyrocketed ever since. How, how much video gaming exists in the state of Illinois? Well, as of the end of February, I believe there's like 22,600 plus machines in the state, uh, 5,300 businesses. Uh, that's equivalent. Casinos are limited to 1,200 gaming positions at each casino, so that's that's uh, the same as having an additional 19 casinos around the state. Uh, if you look at the statistics, I believe that it's it's somewhere in the neighborhood. Of, there's a gaming position in Illinois for every 350 to 400 adults over the age of, of 21. Uh, we've got twice as many licensed facilities in Illinois as all of Nevada. We've got 75% as many games as, as, as the Las Vegas Strip in Illinois. So have we hit a saturation point? Um, well, I would think so. At least $2 billion have been generated from uh, video gaming to date. And 30% of it is taxed, and five sixths of that is directed to the uh, to support the bonds on the capital projects bond issue, and the rest of it goes to local communities. 
And I think, yes, I think we have hit saturation because a lot of the uh, boats are laying off people, notably here at the Paradise. And um, I think a lot of the boats have been asking for relief from some of the uh, expansions that have occurred. Tom is uh, representing the Casino Gaming Association. You represent the river boats. Yes, sir. So how much impact has video gaming and the video gaming terminals had on the river boats in Illinois? It's a significant impact. Uh, what we found is that, that over the last uh, three or four years now that it's been in operation, actually they just finished the, la the, 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 the full, first full three years of operation. Uh, our admissions are down a little over three million during that time period. But what's even more significant is, is and, and the, the video game numbers increased as, as time has gone along. Uh, we dropped about two, two million in admissions uh, just this last year. So we, we went from uh, about 14, almost 15 million admissions a year to just, just under 13, 13 million. Now, now what that means is, is that the riverboats pay an admission tax of $3 for everybody that, that goes through the turnstile. The local community gets a dollar of that, the state gets, gets $2 of that. Uh, a lot of people said that you know, it just doesn't make sense that, that, that people uh, are not going to the riverboats and, and are going to the video gaming parlors. Uh, but when you have uh, uh, a 13.5% drop in admissions, they're going someplace. We're not creating a whole lot of new gamblers, so it's it's had a significant impact. Our revenues are down uh, since 2007. 2007 was the best year the casinos in Illinois ever had, and at that time we only had nine. The the Des Plaines River uh, uh, Riverboat had not opened yet. Since 2007, our revenues are down 48.9 percent. So that means we've dropped about about half. Uh, the original cause of that, we believe, was a smoking ban. In 2008, we went down about 21%, 20.9% to be exact. Uh, and since then, we've dropped another 28%. Uh, and over the last three years since video, it's, the, the drops have increased. Well, let's look at that smoking ban. Um, we have to remember that that smoking ban went into effect in 08. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. But the economy at the end of 08, that was the great uh, the Great Recession. So, what? How do you measure whether the smoking ban had an impact or not when you know the economy collapsed? I'm glad you asked that question because I've I've tried to explain this many many times in in, in, in at the Capitol. Uh, the, the economy really started to fall in in the last quarter, a little bit in the third quarter, but mostly in the last quarter of two, uh, 2008. Uh, our revenues again went down 20.9 percent. Uh, the gaming revenues in Indiana went down about 4%. The gaming revenues in Missouri went down, I think, between 3 and 4%. The gaming revenues in, in Iowa actually went up less than 1%. The only other state in the nation that had a double-digit loss on, on gaming revenues during that time was Colorado, uh, and they went down 17.6 or 8%. Uh, they also were the only other state in the nation that also implemented a, a smoking ban on January 1st, 2008. So the most significant thing that year, even though the economy started to fail, was that, that the smoking ban went into effect. Uh, after 2008, revenue still continued to decrease, obviously at a, a lot slower rate than, than almost 21% during the year, but uh, it's very clear that, that that's exactly what had the impact. What we found was that, that two things happened. People went to other states that had smoking in Missouri, Iowa, and Indiana still have smoking in the casinos. The other thing is, is that people were spending less time gambling. They'd go in, if they want a jackpot, and they'd, they'd wait for the payout, uh, they'd say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a winner, I'm going to leave. The second thing that happened was is, is they'd go have a cigarette. So, so if, if they were there for three hours, they may spend 30 minutes of it smoking. There's a high correlation between smokers and gambling for some reason. Do you recall any conversation on the House floor or, or amongst your uh, fellow representatives regarding the impact that the smoking ban may have had? Yeah, I do. There was a very uh, big question on the part of many of us over whether the, 
the, spo the, the smoking bill even apply to casinos. Um, fundamentally, the smoking bill, ban bill, has been generally recognized as one of the most poorly written bills that was ever adopted in the General Assembly. That's kind of inside baseball. But that bill had all kinds of flaws and contradictions within it, which made it uh, very confusing unto itself. And so the attempts to implement the bill were also very confusing, and the rulemaking for it was very controversial as a consequence. And the whole, the whole matter was <coughs> quite a big mess. But I recall many of us were very surprised that the bill extended to casinos because uh, and subsequently there were efforts to r reverse that, but were not successful. Because I don't think the people at the time who voted for the bill thought they were applying the bill to casinos. When uh, the video gaming was passed, was there ever discussion about the impact it would have on the lottery or the riverboats? I don't recall very much. I think it all happened so quickly. I think the package to fund the bond bill, which included the video gaming piece, got put together very quickly and was passed relatively quickly. And the, there really was very little discussion about each of the revenue sources to pay off the bond. That's the way I recall it. I mean, it went through very, in a very speedy fashion. And I don't believe it did have anywhere near the attention or debate or discussion of the implications for passing the video uh, gambling piece of that. But it moved very quickly. And to, so to answer your questions, no, I don't think there was any really significant discussion on the matter. Tom may re be aware of something different, <coughs> but that's, from my perspective, I never encountered it. No, I think you're right. I think it, it, it moves so quickly that the, the we had a lot of legislation being introduced that year for gaming expansion in various areas, and, and we were concentrating a lot on those areas. Uh, one of the things that we were able to at least get into the Video Gaming Act was a limitation of five machines per establishment uh, at the I, I believe in the original bill I'm not sure there was anything in there about uh, a limit uh, so uh, we, we looked at some, what some of the other states were doing and saw that they had basically many casinos popping up so we we at least got the implementation of the five lim five limit let's talk about legislation I'd like both of you to address this issue but uh, the question is have we hit a saturation point with gambling and yet we see that Bob Rita has introduced two bills, two separate bills. One would allow a casino in Chicago, and the second separate bill would allow a casino in Chicago and four other casinos plus slots at horse, race, horse racing tracks. Ooh, I, I'll, I'll save the, the question of what's the chance of that passing for the representative, but how do you view, as representing the riverboats, what's your view of that bill? Well, you know, it's interesting. Because it adds riverboats. Absolutely. It, absolutely. Uh, it, it's interesting because three, four years ago, uh, when, when large gaming expansion bills were introduced, and a couple passed and then were later vetoed by the governor, uh, we were opposed to the overall large expansion, mostly because it was going to put slots at racetracks. There are five operating racetracks in the state of Illinois. Uh, and there's one that hasn't been operational for a long time, but is even going to put slot machines there. The problem we had with it was that every one of those racetracks was in like 10 or 15 minutes of an existing casino. It, it wasn't, some states have gone to racinos, but they've created a racino in an area where they're, they, they had a plan. So there's a casino here and way over here there may be a racino, but they weren't overlapping so much. So we were really opposed because of the racino issue. Uh, and, and we thought that there might be room for some, some additional riverboats in parts of the state that, that had, had a market for those. Uh, that all changed three years ago when video gaming came on. When, you know, now you got 22,000, almost, almost 24,000, which would be like 20 new casinos in the state. 
That changed the, the, the whole dynamics of gaming in Illinois. Uh, we believe that the market is saturated. Uh, the two specific bills that you're talking about, we've got a lot of problems with because uh, we, we indicated a little bit earlier that, that most of the, all the riverboat gambling taxes go to, to three places. They go to, some go back to local communities that have the riverboat, some goes to the operation of the, of the gaming board, and the balance goes to education. The way these bills are written, uh, basically Chicago's the winner, the state's the loser. And it's because the, of the calculation on how the revenues are divided between the city of Chicago and the state. So in, in every scenario that we could play out using the state, uh, COGPA, the, the, the Commission on Government Forecasting and Accountability's numbers, uh, and depending on how much it costs to build that casino, which they're estimating about 900 million that'll be bonded, be state issued bonds, uh, the, the revenues, the bulk of the revenues will go to the city of Chicago. In every scenario, the, the state of Illinois actually loses revenues because of the set-asides and everything else, and education even loses more. For example, uh, in, in the Chicago-only bill, uh, the state would lose about $21.6 million at, at, a, at a $250 million price for for the, the, the cost of the casino, education would lose 70.5 million. And that's because money is, that the state gets has to be put into other areas. So we, we believe, and we believe the market is totally so, so let me get this straight. The city of Chicago would own the casino in Chicago? Uh, under the current, huh, under some bills that was the case. In this case, the city of Chicago would buy the land, would build the casino, turn it over to the, to the Illinois Gaming Board, so actually the state would own the casino. But the, the split of revenues is such that the city of Chicago gets the, the majority of the revenue. So that would position the state as competing with Harrah's and other for-profit companies in the suburbs? Absolutely, and, and in addition to that, it also has the state regulating its own casino. And, and one other uh, point, I, I appreciate the, the terminology. I hadn't heard it before. Casino versus Rosino slots at racetracks. Yes. yes. Um, the, the Rita bills. Uh, well, uh, we see these bills every year. And for many years, the mayor of the city either does or does not want a casino. <laughs> so it's kind of an off again proposition. Apparently this year uh, these bills are being positioned in the event that uh, Mayor Emanuel decides he wants a casino to pay for some of the Chicago school pension and other uh, problems that he has there. As I may have mentioned in prior to the show, it, it's always been kind of an annual rite of spring for all the gambling bills to show up. I always know it's near the end of session because there'll be a big gambling bill show up. Then everybody who is part of the uh, gaming industry will have a big fight and then nothing will happen. So we'll have to find out whether that is uh, gonna happen again this year or not. And we'll probably find out right toward the end of the session. Yeah, I mean, this is, as I mentioned, a right of spring. As I always know when the General Assembly session's drawing to an end because <laughs> the big gambling bill <laughs> will come up, there'll be a big fight, and then it will fall apart. So because, we'll have to see. Because money's involved. Mike well, the racetracks want the slots. The boats don't want them to have it. There are different uh, racetrack and other owners who have competing interests. I mean, it becomes very complicated because there are a lot of different gaming interests uh, concerned about the bill and who's gonna be hurt and who won't. Might this play into the, will we have a budget or not have a budget uh, situation? No, I think that'll be a separate, uh, okay. that's a separate problem. A problem would be an understatement? Insolvency is where we are, so we'll see if we can work our way. We'll save that for another conversation. We'll stay, we'll stay with the gambling <laughs> issue. Um, Mr. Ostrowski at the Illinois Gaming Board mm -hmm. has said we have hit the saturation point. 
Do you share that viewpoint? Absolutely. Uh, you know, we're, we're seeing, again, I, I talked about the admission numbers, you know, going down two million a year now. Uh, we're not creating new gamblers. Uh, we may have some people now at, at the video gaming terminals that, that wouldn't have come to Peoria or gone to East St. Louis or Joliet to, to, to gamble. Uh, but it, it, they're so convenient now uh, and they're being marketed so well. Uh, they don't have any restrictions on their marketing like the casinos have. It, it, it's another one of our issues with those. Uh, we, we've seen uh, since 2011 and video gaming began, we, we've seen a, a decrease. of. We've gone from uh, a little over 7,800 employees. We're down to about 7,000 now. We've had a that, that's all 10 boats. That's all 10 river okay. boats. We're, we're down 11% in employee. We've lost actually uh, uh, 843 jobs. Uh, since video gaming began, uh, our marketing monies are reduced. You, you, you've seen casinos cutting back on their hours. Uh, the local communities where the casinos are located, we've, we've done a study where we've taken the actual revenues that are generated by video gaming in the whole county where a casino is located and compared the local money that that county is getting to the amount of money that the local community like Peor East Peoria was getting before video gaming, the local share, and every one of those has, the local communities have, have ended up losing revenue uh, compared to what they were getting three years ago. I have to assume that, uh, and Tom mentioned the word convenient, I have to assume convenience is part of this, uh, the success of video <laughs> gaming terminals. It is, but it also makes me wonder about the eventuality of internet gambling that you alluded to a minute ago. I mean, certainly those are very popular venues, very controversial venues, and what impact that may have on both boats as well as video. Yeah, so, with with uh, FanDuel and uh, DraftKings yeah, and yeah. things of that nature. Very those are numbers. very controversial around the country, so and, and we're what, we've seen the end of it. We're, we're watching that those, that legislation and, and what's happening with the, with the fantasy sports pretty closely because uh, there's potential that, that you can bet on almost anything. Uh, the, the, the way they're set up, and, and, and unless the legislation is written very strongly and very tightly, uh, you, could vote, you could bet on, on high school sporting events. My grandson's nine years old and plays on a basketball team. Technically, the way uh, you, I could bet on, on he and, and some of the games that he's involved in. You know, uh, I have to ask the question, do you? No. Okay, <laughs> I want to make sure we understand But he is that. a winner. Uh, uh, so so you know, one of the things that we're, we're at least trying to talk about is that there, were, there are a lot of loopholes in the video gaming Act, and I don't know if you want to talk about those or not, but we we'll probably run out of time before we get there. But but we're hoping that that the uh, fantasy sports betting becomes legal in Illinois, that it's more tightly controlled than what we've seen. I, I want to talk about unexpected consequences. Did the legislature anticipate the? Ex I don't know that explosion is the right term, but we see these cafes, Dolly's Place, and. Um, places like that, with, and usually it's a female name, Betty's Place. Did you anticipate something like that happening? No, as we talked before, this came up so quickly, I don't think there was any uh, anything resembling analysis or thought behind the inclusion of the video uh, gaming revenue source into a bond issue, uh, <clears throat> especially since so many of us never thought that would ever see the light of day. But all of a sudden it was there, and I don't believe anyone was paying any attention at all to <clears throat> the consequences, let alone the unexpected consequences right. of that uh, measure. So we've talked about the RETA bills, that uh, the two different bills, and, and you've made uh, reference to you'd like to see some changes. Is there a single one change that you think would be appropriate for the state? In, in Rita's it, bills? Or? No, no, no. It, it just in general, what would you like to see as representing the uh, casinos? Well, <laughs> you like to, I know you'd like to see VGTs disappear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Aside it's from like that. like Brotherhood and Apple Pie. They're here, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I, I think, if nothing else, 
one of the things that we'd like to see is, is a more stable environment for, for our gaming interests in Illinois. Uh, you know, when, when you go from, when the tax rate nearly every year is addressed, it may go up, it's gone up to as high as 70%, uh, where there, there's more expansion of gaming every year. It, it's, it's not a very stable environment for, for these casino businesses to operate in because you never know what's going to happen. And with that, I bet you didn't ever dream that we'd run out of time so quickly. <laughs> I didn't. Talking about gambling, we'll, we'll, we'll save our betting for just that. And, um, and uh, moved. Uh, really moved. quickly, I want to say thank you so much for being on the program. Congratulations on your service in the legislature as you retire this coming January. Thanks, H. Thank you to Dave Leach, a representative from uh, the city of Peoria, a Republican. And thank you to Tom Schweik, uh, who is the executive director of the Illinois Casino Gaming Association. And we'll be back next time with a discussion with the retiring Bonnie Noble. After 43 years as executive director or being on the board, Bonnie will reflect on those four decades on the next At Issue.